This video comes from Draw Mix Paint, the title, Good Brush Habits and How to Load Your Brush with Paint. Let's see what kind of habits he's talking about. I'm very curious. And also how to load your brush with paint. I have some suggestions as well, so we'll see. We'll see if I agree with him here. Painting is not playing on your canvas like this. Painting is prepping your brush and deciding what you should paint with. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. It is very uh, tempting sometimes, especially for beginners. It's very tempting to blend on the surface of the canvas, but that's not going to lead to good results. You're gonna get a very muddy, flat end result out of that. You're much better off actually mixing those colors, getting it prepared, getting something really solid, and then putting it on directly. And I would even add, if you don't get it, if it's not at least you know somewhat satisfactory, if it's really bad, take your palette knife, scrape it off, try again. And that's a sort of foolproof way to just make sure you get the proper colors there. Just keep trying and trying and trying, and eventually you're gonna get it, and then you leave it. But mixing on the surface, it's, it's just always going to lead to bad results, so don't do that. Next thing to think about, other than just what value or what color you're gonna put into your paint, is how much paint to put in your brush. And that's another big deal. Yeah, that's you know a good point. It, it can be tricky to figure out how much exactly you should put on your brush. Generally, I think if you if you stay towards the side that you're able to put paint on directly, so that it's going to you know make a solid mark, but it's not going to completely stand off the surface. That's what you're aiming for. So you so you do need enough that you can make solid marks, but you don't want to have so much that you're actually you know, building a cake or like building some kind of uh, sculpture on top of the surface. You, you wanna have a balance there. I'm just gonna mix up some random color just so I can demonstrate a few things. It looks like, uh, it looks like he's using acrylic paint, but that's uh, yeah, some very loose oil paint otherwise. And let's just say you've just got this all smeared out and you don't have any kind of pile or anything to work into it. And then if I take my brush, and if I, let's say, have a little bit of something else in the brush, and it's not gonna take much, I can go and I can wipe it out of my paper towel, but if I just go and pick up this color and then go paint it, I mean, it doesn't take but three strokes, and I've already changed that color, as you can see. So, you know, you can't just assume that you're gonna just grab that color and go paint on your canvas and it's gonna stay the same. Yeah, yeah, but I don't, I don't know, uh, because the way he put that on, he was like moving it around like that. It, it can work if you just pick it up and then you put it straight on the surface in one, one single mark. But we'll see what, what else he has to add. So what I would do is I would take some of that color and work my brush into it like that. And this is why it's be better to have bigger piles of paint so you have some color to play with. And then I'll wipe that out on my, on my uh, towel here and then go and pick up some new color. And now if I do that, you can see that the color stays the same. I mean, I guess so, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if that was the best demonstration, but the, uh, the point comes across. I think either way, you, you have to pick up enough paint that you're really gonna be able to make a difference. Obviously, if you were just in a different color, if you were just using a different color, and you're really going for something that needs to have that balance, then you know, wipe off your brush, dip it in your uh, solvent jar, wipe it off a little bit, you know, squeegee it off, get everything off there, and then get yourself that fresh mixture. And yeah, if you need to wipe it around a little bit, go for it. But don't, um, I mean, don't blend it on the surface and don't wipe it around on the surface. If you just mix up color and you don't really think about it, and I just take it and you know and just go and dive right onto my canvas um, you're gonna see that I have this ridge line here of paint and I'm exaggerating it so you can see it better and if I do it that way you can see if I do a ridge that way you can see the glare line that it creates yeah exactly so that's that's the problem is you got to be intentional about where you're gonna use more and less paint. If you're gonna use so much, it better be in an area that's got impasto, it better be in an area where you need that 
sort of elevation because otherwise it's going to start to interrupt what you have going on with the actual uh, surface level and then you're not going to be able to correct it. That's the real problem is that once this dries, if you put it down solidly, you're not going to be able to just scrape it away. It's going to kind of stay there and it's going to have a pretty permanent effect. But now let's say you take this studio, this painting out of your studio and in your studio I'm assuming your light's coming from above, but it doesn't matter. If you take it out of your studio and you put it in a different light, you may end up with glare. And if you look at it now where I've turned on this side light, you can see that there's glare all over that stroke. So my point being is that while you're sitting here painting, it's really important that you level your paint so you don't just leave it with all these ridge lines on there but that you work it and you make it smooth like I'm doing now. How important this is I don't know if I would put this up there with uh, you know the most important things when it comes to your to your brush stroke techniques but definitely keep it keep it thin enough that you're not going to be leaving those those really bold marks like he was showing. It should be enough that you can put it down direct get an opaque feel but it's not going to you know, really stand off the surface so much. The other thing you can do, I mean, if you start to see some of that reflection, you can go back over your painting using a palette knife, try to scrape away those ridges, and then you can use sandpaper to really smooth it out. So that's, you know, one of the crucial effects here with using a palette knife and sandpaper to make sure you're scraping and sanding back over in between each layer. Then you're going to not only help to break up those individual marks and, and get these sort of annoying marks out of the way, but you're also going to be blending through the layer, so you're going to create these more rough and, and textural sort of blending between each different mixture. So ultimately it will feel more alive. So you shouldn't just have everything completely opaque and completely smooth uh, like, like he's talking about if you're going over every single mark like that then you're not really using it to your advantage. You should have a balance between painting thin versus painting thick because that's going to create a you know, contrast between the two and it's going to give it a more sculptural, three-dimensional effect. Let's talk about how much paint I should put in my brush. And, and the simple answer is I should put as little paint in my brush, or, I, or rather, instead of saying how much paint is in my brush, I should say how thick of a stroke to paint on the canvas. And if I paint, you know, if I don't have enough paint in my brush, and I'll just wipe some of this paint out of my brush, and now if I go and I try to paint here, you know, I may not be getting full coverage. Yeah, exactly. So that's how you know that you don't have enough, is that when you put it on, it looks all sporadic, and there's like uh, a kind of drag to it. It doesn't just go on smooth and direct. The thicker that paint is, the harder it's going to be to jump, to, to make adjustments or to change the color or, or whatever it is. It just starts to, um, it's just that much quicker turns into a big mess that's hard to deal with. Yeah, that's, that's true. If you go too thick and there's too much impasto, especially in these areas where you need, you know, softer transitions, then it's going to be very difficult to work back onto it. But there are ways to, you know, kind of, kind of fix this as you go. So, I mean, first of all, if you're putting the paint on and it ends up too thick, you can immediately go over that with your palette knife and that's going to completely smooth it out. The other option is that if it dries in and you realize it's too thick, you can then scrape back over it and use sandpaper to try to smooth it out. But in any case, I think, I think there's a kind of happy medium here. If you're putting it on and you're not able to make a direct mark, that's obviously a problem. In the other direction, if you're putting it on, and you're really building up impasto when you don't intend to, then you've got too much. So just, you know, kind of wipe out your brush on your palette. Try to get a nice, smooth, clear mark when you're putting down your paint. Otherwise, make sure you're sanding and scraping between your layers, and that's really going to serve you well. So yeah, I think that uh, pretty much sums up how to load your brush. If you have any questions, or if you want me to react to any videos, feel free to leave that in the comments. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.